I don't know if this is a little, you know, they're showing Astro Land right now. Sunday morning, you're waking up and they were going into your segment, guys. 69 degrees, it's 712, and it, yeah, it's ups and downs of, uh, of the uh, political game. Big news this weekend, of course, the announcement of Joe Biden joining the mix for the race for the White House. Joining us this morning, political analyst Steve Adubato, syndicated columnist and a talk show host, and Errol Lewis, columnist for the New York Daily News and morning anchor of WWRL Radio. Morning, guys. Morning. morning. This is the first time I've had you both in the in the same chairs now. There'll be no wagering at home. Not at all. No, no fisticuffs. <laughs> what is your, well, all right, first of all, your, your thoughts about Biden. I'll start with you, Steve, since you uh, it's a safe pick on a lot of levels. I mean, Barack Obama clearly needed to shore up the foreign policy side, and Biden's got a great reputation. Uh, 35 years, let's get this straight, it's 1973. It's interesting when you talk about change. A guy who's been in Washington 35 years doesn't look like change to me. But 35 years, he's grown with this expertise in foreign affairs, foreign policy. With the Russia and Georgia situation, he was right there in the middle of it. It clearly shows that Barack Obama recognizes that people recognize in him a lack of foreign policy experience, needed to shore it up and went big with Biden in that way. There are other problems, but on the foreign affairs side, he gets points. Do you think that that he says that uh, this is my weakness? That's a sign of a good leader, perhaps. Some well, would say. I, I think it's a sign of a good politician. I mean, he lost eight of the last 13 primaries, and it was, in, in fact, because they, they weren't doing well with uh, white males. They weren't doing well with Catholics. They weren't doing well in swing states where they're going to have to win in the general. So he gets a, a Catholic uh, white male. He gets a guy who's 65 years old. He wasn't doing that well with seniors. So he's, he's clearly trying to round out the ticket. He's, it, it's showing the political pragmatism that, uh, you know, some of the more rapid supporters of Obama don't like to talk about. But the reality is he's a guy from Chicago. He knows how to count votes. And he's trying to make sure he gets everyone that he needs. Yeah, but he gets a guy that got two percentage points in a presidential campaign. I'm not sure that's a groundswell of white voters saying we like Joe Biden. They didn't like him before. I'm curious as to why they're going to jump on the bandwagon well, right we, now. See, I mean, he never made it past Iowa, though. But, I mean, he's from Scranton, Pennsylvania. They said the scrappy kid from Scranton. This, you know, Obama's already seven points up in Pennsylvania. You could take Pennsylvania off the map for the Republicans. I don't I buy a lot of the polls, is. but go ahead. I, don't, I think a lot of people with these polls are not being as candid as they really should be about how they're going to vote, and we're not going to know to the end. Do some of the things that he has said in the past uh, bother people who are going to be going to the polls? I got one. Just just last year, we talked clean. about this. It, the, the, the word clean? The clean is African American, well spoken and clean. That's bad enough. How about this one? I don't believe he's ready to lead. That's Joe Biden talking about Barack Obama when? Five years? No. Just last year. Did he get ready in the last couple of months? The problem with Joe Biden's statement about Barack Obama, look, everyone who you pick has some downside. But when a guy who you're running against in a presidential campaign just doesn't say he disagrees with you, he says you're not ready, it plays to the preconceived ideas that many people have about Obama already, and that hurts. I don't know how you spin that one. Well, I don't know if you need to, frankly. I mean, we've seen this before, right? I mean, in 1980, you have uh, uh, George Bush calling Reagan's economic plan voodoo economics. Right. He ends up on the ticket. They end up winning. They have two successful terms. I, 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 I didn't hear anybody saying, oh, my goodness, you can't have George Bush on the ticket since he criticized him. Media environment different. In, in fact, the, the whole idea of a big tent, you know, and we'll see in the coming week whether or not the Democrats are ready to try and construct one. But the whole idea is that you can be anti-war like Joe, uh, uh, like Obama, right. and still have somebody who voted for the war on the ticket with you. Let me interject too. I thought John McCain yesterday changed his course a little bit. He was very, he was very kind. Did not go negative. Something he has done in the last couple of weeks. I thought he came out looking very good that way. Yeah, but Steve, it's a very interesting thing. I'm watching Katie Couric's interview with McCain. I'm thinking, sharp, classy, dignified. Then I'm listening to the McCain's campaign people. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> while, while McCain's taking the high road, his campaign people are so far in the gutter, they don't know how to get out of it. They're saying, and this guy, Joe say Biden, Obama. look at all the horrible things he said about Barack Obama before. Look at all the great things he said about uh, John McCain. He actually said, believe it or not, Biden said on John Stewart's show, and he wasn't joking, I'd be proud to run on a ticket with John McCain. They're going to kill this guy on the low road with the campaign staff while McCain takes the high let road. Me, let me interject here. This is the same thing that we said about Hillary Clinton. If she would have run her own campaign instead of listening to whomever she listened to, she might be the person we're talking well, about today. You know, I mean, the, the traditional role of the vice president is to be the attack dog. Right. And right now, uh, McCain is one attack dog short. So he's got to endure a week letting his staff uh, do some of the dirty work, as you say. And then when, when he picks a vice presidential candidate, that'll be the person. I mean, we saw it just yesterday in Springfield. Uh, uh, Obama didn't say a word about McCain. Right, right. And, uh, and, and his, uh, in his very first speech as the presidential, uh, vice presidential nominee, 
Biden gets up and just goes to work. Less you know, just slamming him over and over again. Who do you like uh, as the vice presidential nominee? And uh, on the Republican side. You go first. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, that's the first time you said that. Okay. Well, I'm you know, curious. Look, the, 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 the safe choice is, is Mitt Romney, and that yeah. goes with Republican tradition. They will often take the first runner up as the vice presidential candidate. Um, but but he, I think he's got to go younger, actually. So yeah. Tim Pawlenty of Minnesota becomes a more attractive choice, even though the Republicans have lost Minnesota in the last eight presidential elections. I believe it's Pawlenty. I believe that. Romney is a dangerous choice on a lot of levels. I do not think he's the attack dog they think they need. Mm. I think the personal animosity between McCain and Romney is bigger and more intense than people think, almost as bad as Hillary and Obama <laughs> will see this week in Denver. Oh, could be dark horse? I don't see it. No. I don't see it at all. No. Um, he's got to go younger, and I think it is Palenti from Minnesota. Right. Strong governor out there. All right, you're heading to the, uh, both of you guys said this? Yeah, I got a plane in a couple hours. See, that's the, that's the thing about having money. He's got his own plane. Oh, yeah. You right. do, right. Uh, I should be waiting outside. <laughs> I'm hanging in New York. I'm going right. to be here. Nice, nice studio. It's nice and cool. Guys, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. This is fun doing it together like we'll this. We'll do it again. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> all right, enjoy yourself, too, at the uh, convention. Uh, thank you, Neryl, and uh, also, Steve, join us. Remember, CBS2 is your campaign headquarters. Bob Schieffer will have much more in the race for the White House on Face the Nation. That's at 1030. And don't forget the spirited debate with John McLaughlin and the McLaughlin Group right here on CBS2. Mayor.